Hello YouTubers, this is uh, Fred G4VVQ near Chelmsford in Essex in the UK. This is a quick review on the ICOM RS uh, BA 1 remote control kit. Um, I'm using it with an ICOM IC7300. The antenna is a Mosley TA33M series, which is pointing east at the moment. The radio is on 100 watts. Um, the uh, server is a laptop. It's, uh, it's uh, the aerial is connected to the radio, and the radio has a USB lead to a laptop. And from the laptop, is an Ethernet lead through my mains cables into my living room. Uh, from that goes in the router, and from the router, uh, it's uh, Wi-Fi to my laptop. And um, as you see on here, this is the uh, the, uh, the picture you get on the laptop. Um, you can buy the uh, kit off of eBay. You can get the disc on its own, and that comes from Japan for about fifty pounds uh, English money. Uh, or you can buy a kit from a local retailer, and um, it's usually about two hundred and seventy pounds, and you get. Uh, a knob controller. I'll see if I can show you that. That's the uh, controller you get with it. And um, you, you can get it off of eBay. Um, I got mine from this place here, which is uh, Lamco in Barnsley, and it was about ten pound cheaper, but it's still quite a lot of money. But with the kit you get the tuning controller and you get a USB lead which is virtually a printer lead and you get the software disk. If you buy the software disk separately from Japan make sure you get the, the uh, license number and the product key number. There's two numbers which are printed on the uh, outside of the packet. Without those it, uh, it won't work. At the moment I've got the system running through my local IP address. Um, I haven't tried it on the uh, external one. Um, nobody else has actually tried to connect to me uh, via that yet. So, but um, maybe in in time to come they will. But at the moment, it's just uh, I'm just connected on the uh, local IP address. It was a bit of a job to set up. In all honesty, um, it took me about four days and watching a lot of YouTube clips, tearing my hair out, and uh, reading a lot and asking a lot of full questions to people. But uh, in the end I did get it to work. The worst thing was setting the uh, COM port and the, uh, getting the audio correct. Um, without the audio right you can't hear anything and you can't get the microphones to work and all sorts. There is a lot of YouTube clips on this. Uh, the best one is probably Jeff W6FCC. He does a whole series on it. And there is a good one from a, a gentleman called Bob uh, from ICOM UK Limited. Well, it's a Saturday afternoon here. Um, as you can see, there isn't too much on the band. You can see by the scope on the right-hand side. This is 20 metres. Uh, the other bands are virtually dead, in all honesty. I can click onto them. As you can see, 144, 430, and 1200 uh, are not on this radio, on the IC7300. Uh, 50 megs, the antenna is not uh, resonant for. But you go on there, it's uh, just nothing, really. And 28 or 10 metres is there's hardly anything on there, just a bit of noise at the moment. Um, Sunspot site was nearly at the minimum. Uh, 12 metres, not much on there. 21, hardly anything on there, only a bit of noise. Uh, 18, sometimes you can get a bit on. But, uh, not much there at the moment. Uh, in all honesty, um, that's, uh, that's, that's um, 10 megahertz, that's WWV. Um, I haven't got the sound on at the moment, but um, you can see on the graph that there's not much there. Um, 40 meters, one or two weak stations, but the antenna's not resonant for 40 or 80 or anything like that. That's 80 meters, a lot, fair bit of noise. Uh, and that's. Um, that's top band or 1.8 to 2 megs. A lot of noise there. 
So the only one really at the moment that's uh, got much on is 20 meters, which is there. If I turn, uh, well, we can go through the controls. Uh, transmit is there. If you transmit, um, you can kind of. Oh, you can see the uh, S meter move. Um, let me go back to receive. That's the tuner. Tuning it, antenna is blacked out because there's only one socket on the IC7300. Uh, that's for monitor, monitor your, your own audio. Break in, preamp, it's got about two or three settings on attenuator, IP, don't know what that does. Automatic gain control, noise blanker, noise reduction, compressor, transmit bandwidth, microphone, setting up the microphone, etc. RF power. And when you turn this RF power down, it does actually go down on the radio, which is a bit of a novelty. CW pitch, RF gain right up, squelch and volume. This is the memory system here. Uh, there's your VFO. Um, as, as I turn the knob on the controller, the knob goes around on there. And uh, all this duplex stuff here, and your um, clarifier controls there, and... There's all your bands, there's the filters up there, and there's your settings up here. Um, that, uh, these ones, you can set some things in there, and that, well, this one has to be set up properly, otherwise you can't get the system to work. Uh, that one closes it down, you've got your scope there, on and off. CW key, a voice thing there, recording voices. Uh, memory. I've got two in the memory, which are BBC Essex and and then another one. Um, remote and that that one there actually turns the radio on and off in the shack, so uh, that's quite a novelty. That's your frequency counter, your your S meter and all that transmit bandwidth, etc., etc. Filters and things there. So it is quite comprehensive. Is you can't control the the memory on the radio from here, um, but you can put you can build up a memory system on here. But it's different to the one that's actually on the radio, so you can't do that. There's one or two things you can't do, but they're not particularly worth worrying about. Okay, let's have a quick listen and see what we can find. Uh, turn the mute button off. Um, this is a couple of noise makers down the bottom of this band here. What I'll do is only about two minutes to go before my software uh, stops uh, working at ten minutes. So um, I'll just um, go through, the, listen to the radio, and then that will come to an end. So thanks for listening in advance, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.